In this example, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate capturing our optical scanner of our patient's prosthesis with the stickers in place utilizing an intraoral scanner. The intraoral scanner is really an ideal way for us as clinicians to capture this data. Not many clinicians have a desktop scanner. However, if you do have a desktop optical scanner, you can simply take the denture prosthesis and put it into the desktop optical scanner and accomplish the similar goal. The vast majority of times, clinicians are going to have an intraoral scanner, and I'm going to demonstrate that right now here for us. At our intraoral scanner, we have a couple of things that we need to get ready prior to beginning the intraoral scan. First and foremost, we want to make sure that our intraoral scanner is turned on, calibrated, and ready to go for the day. Additionally, our computer has been turned on, everything is set, and we're ready to also begin with the scans while the patient is still here in the chair. Ideally, when the intraoral scanner is ready to go, it makes this process extremely streamlined. The general goal is we want to capture a digital scan of this denture all the way around, meaning 360 degrees around the prosthesis. It can be a little bit tricky at first to do this technique, so I recommend trying it a few times before you try it with a patient in the chair. A couple of uh, tips that are helpful for you to go ahead and make sure that we accomplish this in a streamlined fashion. Number one, if you're using an intraoral scanner that has some sort of AI or filtering mode, it's generally a good idea to make sure that you turn that off. Additionally, if you have a scanner that allows you to control your depth of field, you want to make sure that that's set approximately 50% of the depth of field at first, and avoiding using any sort of zooming in modes at the beginning. We want to choose the arch of the prosthesis that we're scanning. Since this is a maxillary arch, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we've chosen the maxillary arch. Let's go ahead and begin by scanning the soft tissue surface of the prosthesis. So I'm going to click my button to begin the scanning process. As I begin that scanning process, we're going to go ahead and see that I'm going to start to capture the scanner in kind of like a, like a moving side to side mode. And I can toggle the visual rendering into different dimensions, black and white, you know, a color mapping mode, a hybrid mode, or simply just color mode. So I'm going to go to the default color mode, so that way you can kind of give an example of what this should look like. Whenever you're scanning the tissue surface of the prosthesis, it's a general idea, a generally a good idea to kind of bob and weave as we go across the denture in the prosthesis. Now as I do that, we're going to kind of swing back to capture as much of the periphery as possible. Additionally, I'm going to kind of start to try to dive down into little nooks and crannies using the border as a guide. Now notice here as I get about halfway back to the denture, I'm going to kind of do like a bob and weave across the entire soft tissue surface of this prosthesis. As I do that, I'm going to also pick up some of that, that anatomy so that way everything joins together properly. It's also a good idea to kind of keep our fingers away from the edge of the denture so that way I don't inadvertently scan my finger like I did just right in there. So I'll kind of move my finger around, taking the scanner wand tip and popping it into the denture so that way I can get all the nooks and crannies imaged. Making sure that I've captured the entire soft tissue surface of this prosthesis first before moving on to anything else. So I can see here for the most part I've got most of the soft tissue surface captured properly. There's maybe a little spot that I have to go ahead and fill in right there. So I'm moving this around so I can see it from different dimensions. Coming back into the scan mode, I'm going to go back to my home point, which is more or less the anterior portion of the premaxilla, capturing that little area that I missed. Now at this point, I'm going to go to the facial and start to roll the corners right around the borders. Notice I'm keeping my right hand relatively stable while scanning, and I'm moving my left hand with the denture prosthesis in place. As I continue to do that, I'm going to come to the facial, and you have to be careful. Don't take this and start sliding it straight across right now. You want to do this bob and weave. You get lost, come back to that premaxilla, bob and weave, slide across, Bob and weave, come back to the border, and now notice where my glove was. It'll start to filter that out. I'm going to move my hand, come back to that premaxilla, and go back to the border, filling in those areas. Capturing that first aspect of the denture scan is absolutely important because as I'm starting to pick up some of the teeth, 
Now, once I have that initial capture completed, it just automatically starts to jive and join together. And I can pick it up more or less in different areas, move it around. As long as I do that initial border bob and weave at the beginning, even if I go ahead and I take a little break right now, and I say, you know what, I'm gonna take a little break to inspect my scan. So I'll go ahead and take a break, hold my little button down to inspect my scan. Pretty much looks identical the way it did before, but now I can start to see I'm really starting to pick up all of the facial aspects of the teeth. Now I want to continue forward. I want to fill in more of these details here because it will give our uh, Synergy 3D treatment planning uh, and our Navigation Synergy uh, treatment planning a, a lot more data. So now at this point, still I'm going to come back to my home position, which is that pre-maxilla. And at this point, I'm going to now make sure that I image these little teeth and beads all the way across. I want to pick up all the data around those little those stickers. And I'm going to roll it so that way I'm picking up the teeth. Now again, I'm going to do almost like a facial lingual roll as I slide across the midline. Again, take a look here. My right hand is relatively stable while I'm scanning. Move hands, go back to that premolar here. And very carefully sliding across. As I get to the posterior, I do want to fill in some of those details. Pick up my little sticker and my sphere on there just a little bit better. So that way I have all the data that I need and then I'll pick up the rest of these teeth to make sure that the teeth are in good shape. I have my little stickers, everything all set. And all of my teeth before moving on. If I pick up a little glove like I did there, I'll just switch hands, go back to the teeth on that one side. and then just kind of swing that down to start filtering that out just a little bit. Now to capture the palette, I'm going to come back with my finger in that holding position. And going to the pre-maxilla here, just swinging across like a side-to-side -side motion. And incidentally, these little stickers do help for us to go ahead and make this a much straightforward procedure. So having one or two extra little stickers here on the palette will make my process easier. So if I do get lost like that, it is important to go ahead and just stop, come back to my starting point to make sure that I don't pick up any accessory data because of my hands were just moving a little bit too quick for the scanner that time. Getting back to this back corner, I like to trace along the border and do like that bob and weave. And sometimes I like to roll just a little bit, coming back to those teeth. If I do get lost, coming back to that back border back here, filling in some of that border and even taking that. And now I'll take a look, click my button and I'll inspect my scan a little bit more just to kind of see how I'm looking. So from the occlusal surface, that's pretty much ideal. Then flipping this over, also pretty ideal. Sometimes it will eliminate one or two of my stickers, so maybe I'd want to go back in and touch up those stickers just a little bit more. If your scanner has trouble with picking up those stickers, you can also switch and use the 2.3 millimeter stickers, which are kind of like a bluish ball, which the intraoral scanner might be able to pick up a little bit better in your particular case. Alternatively, I can come back in here and just fill that data in just a little bit more, rolling my hand around. And then sometimes just adding a little bit more data here is going to verify that my sticker is complete. And hitting my blue button to go ahead and complete the scan. We can see here we've got a pretty nice looking scan right now. Pretty much everything that we need to see. I'll jump out of that mode and just kind of show you with a mouse. Once you're satisfied with how that looks, I'm going to save my scan and allow the scanner to go through a post-processing mode. 
Verifying that the scan is complete by looking at it on the screen and going through our post-processing mode is critical prior for us to, to go ahead and dismiss the patient. Anytime that you have an intraoral scanner, we do want to go through that post-process preview mode, close out of the case and let the computer think because it will go through all of this post-processing stages. Whether you want to fill in holes or not, that's completely up to you with your intraoral scanner company. This particular scanner, I do want to fill in some basic holes and let it process. We'll come back in a couple of minutes and check in on it when it's done. Once my intraoral scanner is done with its post-processing steps, we're now ready to go ahead and inspect the scan and make sure everything is complete. In this clinical example, we went ahead and we just demonstrated how to go ahead and scan the denture 360 degrees. As a general recommendation, it's also a good idea to go ahead and scan the patient's opposing teeth or make an impression using alginate and stone and also to scan the bite. So generally, what I like to do in my own clinical practice, after going ahead and making the scan, I'll go back into the scan, scan the patient's bottom, put the denture back in their mouth, and then then scan the bite. So that way I can send all of that information off to Navigation Synergy so they have a 360 degree scan of the denture, the lower or the opposing, and the patient's bite. Once we take that and we combine it with our cone beam CT data of the patient wearing the prosthesis in their mouth, we have pretty much everything that we need from a data acquisition point of view. It's also very helpful to go ahead and send along some photographs of the patient with full face, high lip line, low lip line, and a profile view. Let's go ahead and take a look at our scan. I like to inspect the scan of the prosthesis to make sure that I have everything here complete prior to dismissing the patient. Inspecting at 360 degrees, overall everything here looks good. Once we've completed our scan, the prosthesis, the opposing, the bite, our cone beam scan of the patient wearing the prosthesis, and our clinical photographs, we can then go ahead and remove the stickers, hand the patient back their prosthesis, and dismiss the patient. At this point, we can now go ahead and export our data from our cone beam scan file as well as from our intraoral scan file data. I encourage you to go ahead and reach out with your digital distributor to learn some of the techniques of how to export that data. Once we've gone ahead and we've made all that data, we've captured all the information, we can then take those, download them from our cone beam, our optical scanner, and then send them off to Navigation Synergy for creating of the Encompass case. At Zest Dental Solutions, your sales team is here to help you as well. Additionally, you can always reach out to me if there's any clinical questions specifically on how we generate this data. So that way it streamlines the clinical procedures and makes it easier and more efficient for both you, the clinician, as well as the team at Absolute.